All right, folks, we, uh, we're getting ready to start disassembling everything so that we can get to those headers. Uh, the first part of this video is going to be my evaporator is, uh, has a hole in it. So we're going to have to take that out first, which makes it easy for me to get at that exhaust. So I've taken this uh, fender off here. The side fender removal is these holes here, the bolts right here. And then there's one more, well, two more. Let me see if I can pull up. It's one right here. And the final one is down there. Okay, the light is not cooperating. So there's one bolt that you'll have to, it's a number 10, it's a number 10 and basically you just put the wrench between this under skirt and right here and you'll be able to loosen that and you don't have to take it out, you just have to loosen it so that the side fender comes loose, the lower fender comes loose. You take out this top one and the ones that uh, at the front right here and it pulls right off. Okay, that exposes your blower box and your windshield wiper fluid. I've already, since again, I have to get to the, the uh, evaporator in here, the AC evaporator that is inside this box. I have to pull off this entire assembly, this whole box back here to get at that. But I feel like since I'm going for the exhaust manifolds anyway, I'm taking it out. You won't have to do this. You can reach the exhaust manifold bolts, those rear ones from the bottom, once that catalytic converter's out. I'm just not going that route. To pull this off, I'm going to have to take off this inner fender, which is one assembly. It is held on. You see, it's already shaking right now. I'm missing some bolts on mine, but you can see me move it up. Okay, again, I got to take off this inner fender too. Seems like the only thing holding this inner fender on for me is it's mostly broken now. I'm missing some bolts, but you're gonna have to feel around. It's connected to this this clamp here, and this clamp here holding these hoses on. So I'm gonna delete those. Take this uh, take this bolt out. And then the one, and then all of these along the front fender, and this whole thing is going to come out. When I take that out, I'll be able to get more of the rest of this stuff. Every once in a while, I'll turn the camera back on, and you'll be able to see. All right, inshallah. Okay, the first part that has to come out for this uh, evaporator coil to come out, I disconnected this. Uh, the hose, the hoses to this radiator field tank, surge tank. It's not a surge tank, whatever this tank. Y'all know I'm pointing at it. You can figure out the correct name for it. But, and then I marked the upper and lower hoses so that I know when I put it back together. So in order to do this, disconnected those two hoses. Then I had to get a screwdriver and this is what the connector looks like. So I had to stick the screwdriver in between here and, uh, and get that pried off and then pull down from the bottom. It is located right there. That, that connector, that tells the, the car with the computer when you have low coolant, okay? Let me see if I can put my finger on it. It's that thing. Sorry about the light, got no help. My seven year, there it is, my thumb is touching it. That's where that sensor is. And you have to just try to get at it the best you can because this hose, this wire doesn't, isn't gonna allow you to pull it up really far. But right now I'm getting ready to disconnect the uh, heater core from up under here so I can pull this whatever this booster thing is away. So I gotta take off those clamps 
and then remove anything any other hose that this thing is connected to all right holy crap I did not know when I decided to make a video of this that it was going to require me to stop every time I did something so that I could let y'all know what was going on but at any rate all right I took those two hoses off the inlet load jeez that thing is freaking dented up like a son of a gun dang whoever put that he really dented that up I don't think y'all can see it but man that lower hose is really dented to crap anyhow I'm also I bought a new uh, coolant hose kit so all of the factory coolant hoses I'm gonna be replacing with new ones uh, job like this you might as well do all that crap got it apart so anyway I need to trace this I was gonna go ahead and pull these hoses out uh, but that hose goes on down to the water pump and I'm like man to get to that I'm gonna have to pull out other stuff namely the uh, the AC lines going to the evaporator and since I'm taking that evaporator out anyhow I need to take those hoses off first so I'm gonna take this uh, I gotta take this whole assembly. Well, I'm gonna take the line all the way up to the accumulator. I'm gonna take this line out and also the line up under it, take it out. And then that should give me space to take the this hose here. Now, let me, okay. To take both of these hoses out, this one and this one, once I get all the stuff that's on top of them out. All right. So the next time y'all see me, that's what I'm going to attempt next, is to, is to disconnect this hose, disconnect this one, disconnect this one. Both of these are going to the evaporator, okay? So one is an inlet, one is an outlet for the evaporator. Take out both of those, dis well, disconnect it, then lift them out. Um, Apparently, they also are connected to this inner skirt that I'm going to be removing because I have to get to the lower bolts of this uh, assembly here and I need this skirt out of the way, this inner fender out of the way. So I'm going to take all of that out. Uh, it also looks like these hose, one, this hose here goes all the way over here, something going to the intake. But I'm going to disconnect all of that, whatever has to be disconnected. I'm getting ready to pause now and make some notes on what I took apart first. So when I'm putting it back together, I see what, what comes out first will be the last thing. First off, last on. Okay? Alright. This is just a reference video for me for the hoses. So when I go to put them back together, I know it's, see that bottom hose to the water pump. Well, front hose comes around, 90 degree up, runs over top of the AC line, up under those AC lines, and back over there. Okay. And the one with that inlet thing goes on the bottom. The one, the check valve. Alright, in order to get this bottom hose off, bottom coolant hose off to the radiator, I actually had to cut it. Because this, the retainer, the hose clamp, was turned in the wrong direction. And because of the, the, the direction the hose clamp was turned, it was facing up, I couldn't get a wrench on it with enough leverage to squeeze the hose camp, clamp back. So I just cut it and then I was able to get my wrench on it, I meant my pliers on it. When I put it back on, I'm going to put that hose clamp facing downward so you can actually slide it from the bottom. Alright. Alright, I just disconnected the lower water pump hose uh, let's see. down there this one up here now I have to do that one and I believe I'll be able to and with these hoses remember the rule is you got to take all the hoses off the top first 
and then installation is reversed. You put every hose on the bottom first because you got to get it the hose clamps. So I couldn't get that lower hose on the water pump off until I had first taken off all the top hoses because the, there's no way you can get your pliers on the hose clamps to get them off. And each time I take off one of these old hoses, I take the hose clamp from it and put it on my new hose and set the new hose to the sides for installation later. Man, I made a dog mess. Once you pull them hoses out, I have all the new hoses and the old hoses lined up beside each other for later assembly. Swap, swap, need to swap all those hose clamps over to the new hoses. Uh, when you start pulling these hoses apart, you're gonna spill coolant everywhere. It's all over my floor. I hope it doesn't stain my garage finish, garage floor finish, but whatever. Uh, yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is take off got to let let the light go for a minute I'm gonna take off the bolts in the fender that this inner fender has screws right here and screws right here that hold on these two hose clamps or hose mounts once I take those two off then I can take these hoses on off and uh, and because my car, I paid $2,500 for this C4, so, and it runs fine. It had a water leak and the, the, the water pump gasket leaked and the intake gasket leaked, so I replaced all of that. And then it was ready to go. So, for $2,500, you get this kind of thing for your inner fender missing screws from repeatedly being taken apart and put back together. Uh, but it's something you can deal with. But anyway, you'll find out all the bolts and screws that hold this thing in are supposed to. Like something should be connecting it there, but it's not. Alright, so now uh, now I'm going to clean up and call it a night. As uh, whenever you go to take off this inner fender, you have to first take off the rubber weather stripping or whatever you want to call it from the top because this is actually three different pieces okay so I'm gonna just take off that back piece and the middle piece all right all right I got that inner fender out and this is what you have left there's uh this clutch relay and the fan relay are right here this is the I have a manual and that shift from one to three or one to four I was getting sick of that thing always cutting on so I just unplugged this relay so when you unplug this relay then it can't complete the circuit so the light still comes on on the dash when it says shift one to four but uh, it doesn't actually engage the transmission but definitely have my it's either this is this one here that is plugged up is either the fan clutch or the AC compressor I think it's the AC compressor because I put a new one on there hoping to fix mine, but that wasn't a problem. Anyway, it's the leaking uh, evaporator, which we are working to get to. Next thing I'm going to do now, take out this bar here. Uh, that's for the... I think that... Well, maybe I don't have to take that bar out. I hope not, because this looks like it's connected. Yeah, I don't think I'm a fool with that. But now I got to get to the bolts in this thing, in the cover. I might have to take that bar out, but maybe not. These were the two. I just put these screws back in here so I wouldn't lose them. This, this is bolted to that inner fender. Okay. And since I'm putting headers on during this job also, I'm getting more and more access to the, to the exhaust manifold right there. Cause I'm pulling this exhaust or this evaporator out, so let's keep going. Probably get ready to disconnect these fuel lines. All right, y'all. So uh, I have the inner fender out, and this are the two. Cl I took this clamp off. It's mounted with this clamp and that clamp I took the screws out and then put them right back in uh, just so I wouldn't lose the screws and took those two screws out right there and it slides 
the fender has a uh, has two slots so once you loosen it it just slides out I kept those uh kept the other bolts or screws in there kept those in and just took it out in the rear half and that middle or the rear third in the okay so now what we're gonna do next we have there we go. Got one right there. Uh, got another one right there. Mine's missing. <laughs> Whoever had it before me took it out and then put it back. And there's another one. It's missing. But that would be on yours. Uh, Got one right there, it's a stud sticking through the firewall. Just gotta take that nut off. Uh, there's another. And another, and I'm sure there's some more under there. Let's get a look. Ah, uh, we can see there's the. I can see the. The evaporator right there. See the coils? That thing isn't even connected. Okay. So it's not connected. And then it looks broken right there. Hmm. I might need a new housing and new bolts. Well, there's nothing to get down here then. Okay, uh, this is the gift that just keeps on giving. This job is a lot to it. Uh, a lot of things I can point out to you as I go, but uh, this I'm taking. I'm using these two wrenches to get this hose loose that connects the evaporator. Uh, because, and I wanted to let you know that inside of it is going to be your expansion valve. So, that's a three quarters there. And this one's a 7 8 if you ever have to change the expansion valve in your AC system. And that right there is going to be one of your pressure switches. Either that's your high or low. It's either your high pressure switch or your low pressure switch. You can Google them. This one down here, let me use. This one down here, the lower one is the smaller diameter tube so that's how you know the pressure switches one is going to be high pressure one's low pressure and one of them will be the biggest tube and one will be the smallest tube so again this is your smaller tube here that's that pressure switch this is the larger tube and the other pressure switch and i'm planning on replacing both of my pressure switches so uh, at any rate, if you need to do pressure system, pressure switches on your AC system and expansion valve, right there. All right, y'all. I started taking this. Uh, started taking this evaporator box off the wall, and as I took it off, I hit that bar. Let me see if I can hold the light. Put the wrench down. So this bar right here. The box is hitting the bar and I can't get it out without removing this bar. But come to find out, it's uh, pretty easy to get off. There's one bolt right there. My finger's touching it. Okay. Uh, and then there's another bolt right here on your car. Mine's missing. And it should be one more under here. Mine is also missing. So this thing has one, two, and three bolts right there. And then it has two more bolts down there. You see those two on either side of this? I'm going to get an extension and you can come straight at it right there. All right. All right, so I got the evaporator box off the wall. Uh, there was some sealant maybe that's what people put on after they took it out last time because they knew they lost bolts 
Uh, oh, and this is something mine didn't have, but yours will have. I gotta get my light adjusted right. There was, there's a bolt right here. So when you're down on the ground looking up right beside the, the fuel filter, you'll see a wire right above that yellow wire is going to be a bolt that you're going to need to take out. Mine just didn't have it. Mine only had this busted one. So when I put it back together, I'm going to go through that hole there instead of fooling with that one. Inshallah. And yeah, that one, that one. This one was easy to get to. You just need a 14, uh, 13, 13 millimeters. All right. And you could move all this stuff off, and I might do it. It probably make it easy and cleaner. Hey y'all, I, I actually I was getting ready to start uh, on the other side. I want to clean everything out first, and then. Uh, start on this uh, exhaust manifold spray it down and everything with the PB blaster but I was like I'm gonna take these metal hoses out of the way just because why not and, you know it's so messy and I can get a clean look at the engine so that's what I'm gonna do I just had to take off this hose clamp take off the one down there and then this oh and disconnect that end right there and it lifts right on out of the way oh shut leaking cooling oh yeah y'all this uh this fuel lines used to be connected to that box too but obviously whoever had it before me broke it uh, i'm finding all kind of stuff as i pull this thing apart but so before you can pull that box out for the evaporator you're gonna have to disconnect the fuel lines uh from it 